there are a number of considerations in choosing a safe anchorage. Firstly, will the place we have chosen have enough water to keep the boat afloat for the duration of our stay? This is where those tidal height calculations we looked at earlier come into their own. Work out the tide times and heights and always give yourself a safety margin. The direction and strength of the wind are also key factors in choosing where to anchor. Waves are generated by the wind. The harder it blows, the bigger the waves, and the last thing we want in our peaceful anchorage is a strong swell. So we always try to anchor so that the land gives us some protection. In this example, anywhere along this coast, we'll feel the full effect of the wind and waves, making its bays unsuitable. Our weather forecast suggests that later the wind will move round to this direction, also making this bay uncomfortable. Therefore, in this example, this bay would be the correct choice for a safe night's stay. The nature of the seabed also needs to be considered. The chart will tell us what to expect. This symbol means a sandy bottom, normally good holding for an anchor, as is mud. To be avoided are weedy patches and craggy rock. Many anchorages are marked for us on the chart, but the symbol doesn't mean that this place is suitable in all wind strengths and directions. We need to take into account the prevailing conditions. We should also try to avoid anchoring on or near any leading lines or channels into an anchorage. Others may also need to use the bay. If there are other boats in the bay, we need to consider what's going to happen when the tide or wind direction changes. A boat will always face into the strongest element, which means that as the tide or wind turn, all boats in the bay will swing round. We need to have taken this into account when anchoring our boat, ensuring that we're not going to swing into a shallow patch or any of the other boats. We should also try to anchor near boats of a similar profile to ourselves. A large, high-sided cabin cruiser, for instance, will swing around far more than a low catamaran, which is offering less resistance to the wind. Most boats will carry at least two anchors of different types, and use the one that is best suited to the type of seabed. There are a number of designs available. Some are good all-rounders, like these Delta and CQR anchors. Others work better on specific types of ground. The traditional fisherman's anchor, for instance, is good for rocky bottoms, whilst the Danforth offers excellent holding in mud. Laying an anchor is simple enough, as long as you stick to some basic rules. Firstly, having picked our spot, we point the boat into the strongest element, either wind or tide. Get the boat stopped and lower enough chain to get the anchor to the bottom. Now we start moving the boat backwards whilst easing the chain out in time with the movement of the boat. We are laying the chain out along the seabed. We need to put out at least four times the maximum depth of the water if our anchor uses chain or six times if it's attached to the boat with a mixture of chain and rope. The anchor chain or rope should be marked so that we can monitor how much we're paying out. When we have reached the required amount, called the scope in nautical terms, we lock off the anchor and gently apply a bit more power backwards to dig the anchor into the seabed. Common mistakes are to either drop the anchor when the boat is still moving forwards or to drop too much chain too quickly. Either will result in a pile of chain on the seabed which fouls the anchor. If in doubt, err on the side of putting out more rather than less chain. Anchors are designed to be set with a shallow chain angle. There is little or no holding power when it is vertical. Finally, we need to check whether the anchor is holding. Avoid the temptation to leave the boat straight away. Hang on a few minutes and using either our hand-bearing compass or a couple of points on the land, Check that the anchor is not dragging. 